Seven months. That's how long the Fakiri family had to wait for this, a coroner's report about the death of 30-year-old Solomon Fakiri. I'm Christina Howard outside of the Toronto South Detention Centre, a provincial jail not unlike the one in Lindsay where Solomon was being held when he died last December. And still seven months later, the family has no clear answer as to why he died, but they have many more questions as to how. I would not wish this on anybody. No one deserved to die like this. No one. And this was wrong. But this could have happened to anybody in this province, in this city. Shackled and in a spit hood, locked in segregation and suffering from schizophrenia, 30-year-old Solomon Fakiri died in custody last December. And while a coroner's report found dozens of bruises on Solomon's body, the cause of death is listed as unascertained. Fakiri's lawyer says despite the uncertain cause, criminal charges need to be laid. In this case, you're dealing with an individual who has been handcuffed at his wrists and ankles. He's been pepper sprayed twice and has a hood over his head. And in those circumstances, his body reveals 50 plus injuries, none of which are related to life-saving efforts. In that case, you are dealing with assault. We obviously know what the Quarter Lakes Police Service needs to do now. They need to lay criminal charges that my, on individuals that were accountable for my brother's death. You know, my brother was criminally assaulted um, and that people need to answer that. Solomon's family says he was suffering from a variety of mental health problems when he was charged with aggravated assault and other charges on December 4th, an incident that led to his incarceration. According to the coroner's report, leading up to his death, Solomon had refused to leave a shower for hours, spat on a guard, refused to re-enter his cell, and resisted officers' efforts to restrain him. The Lakes Police have not yet laid any charges against staff from Central East Correctional Center. The case is reportedly in the hands of the Crown Attorney. A coroner's inquest is likely to be held in coming months. But Yusuf isn't just pointing the finger at staff. He says the corrections minister has to answer for the system's failure. Solomon was waiting for a bed at a mental health facility when he died. Give us an explanation of why my brother is dead. Solomon's never coming back. Nothing will bring him back. And believe me, my agony pales comparison to the agony that my mother goes through. In a statement, Minister Lalonde's spokesperson writes, as there were ongoing investigations into the matter, it would be inappropriate for the ministry to comment further while investigations are underway and may be subject to a coroner's inquest. Now, City News has confirmed that 14 correctional officers and one manager have been suspended with pay since Solomon's passing. Several sources familiar with the investigation say they do not expect any charges to be laid against the officers because they say that the alleged assaults did not happen at the hands of any of these suspended correctional officers. Outside of Toronto South Detention Centre, Christina Howard, City News.